It's always like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Because in this video, we are going to take a close look at the X70, the budget series of handhelds. I've reviewed all of, like, like all kinds of versions, but this X70, I did got a lot of requests of it. So I was thinking, all right, why not? Let's review it and let's take a close look at it. So when you're looking at this thing, there's not a lot of information on the box itself. A little bit unfortunate, if you ask me. But inside the box, we're going to get ourselves, yep, it's a very familiar one. So we also know this thing like the X2 from Pow Kitty. But the question remains, how is it? Because is this thing better? Is it like a worse? Because X70, like, what the hell is going on with those naming? Because it's absolutely confusing. Of course, not to forget, we're going to get ourselves the toilet paper manual, like always. Yeah, that doesn't explain a lot, basically, how the system works, or better said, where to find the buttons and the Type C. Yahoo! For basically connecting this device. But I'll do a quick overview of it, and the first thing is like, oh. This thing smells very nice. Mm. All right, so it's a very thin model, what you can see over here. It's absolutely thin. And I must say, like, that is not always a good thing. And what do we mean with this? Because it's not, like, super comfortable. It needs to have, like, a kind of a comfortable shape to it. I'm not going to say it's, like, super uncomfortable. But still, I really don't really like these handhelds in general. So what you're going to get are two micro USB connections. And what you can see, they are basically for a controller. They're not, uh, they're not like, included in this. Because what you can do is, like, charge it over here with a Type-C putting in two controllers and then at the top we can even plug in an HDMI mini so you can use this thing like a freaking retro game console oh yeah that is pretty damn cool we have here the on and off switch volume control and the audio out or a headphone out we have the SD card over here they are giving me a 32 gigabyte nowadays you're not using like SanDisk or other fake brands you're just using their own versions now quite interesting to see at the top we're going to get only two shoulder buttons, so we are limited when it comes for playing games, and that's a little bit unfortunate. So if you want to play, let's say PlayStation, we're missing out buttons. Something they are still doing. Two analog sticks without a click, return button, select start, and the D-pad itself. I must say the D-pad feels kind of flimsy, like, I'm not a big fan of it. Also feels kind of weird, but I'm going to test it out. What are we going to get in general with the D-pad and is it any good? But let's power it on and let's see what we're going to get with the display and all the other shenanigans. And okay, the thing is, let's remove this, this screen protector. Oh, ASMR mode. All right, so the display, there we do have like the display that we have seen before. Think about the Pau Kitty or whatever brand, X16. Here you can see like the viewing angle is pretty damn, let's say basic. So the panel they are using, it's not really great. Oh boy, so the front plexi is very reflective. And the reason I find a little bit of a bummer with this display, you can see I have like a dead pixel fest over here. This is the number one. I will give you like another overview. This is number two. Let's see if I can give you an up close. But when you're going to look into the screen, and you will maybe see it when recording, but oh boy, my version has like five dead pixel in it. It's absolutely hilarious if you think about it. Like how bad can it be? It can be that bad now. I'm thinking they were losing the horrible menu that I've seen before with the PS Vita knockoff. The menu is very responsive, so that is a very positive thing because the previous one was pretty damn awful. Pressing shoulder button, here you can see other types that we can be playing on it. And it goes up to PlayStation 1. We also seen it with different Pau Kitty or other brands. They're using the similar like specifications and also menu itself. We do have favorite list, history. We do have the search option over here. The search option is not super great because it searches on the file. So let's say you want to search for Sonic. I wish they had a touch screen with this. It would be so more convenient, but okay. But here you can see like the search function doesn't work great because if you go to look into the list you will find a lot of sonics but somehow it only notice uh, it basically searches and finds these two so when you're looking at absolutely garbage the file system here you can go like into the file system of this d card if you want to load up a video file for example you can do it over here so yeah that's basically it what it is with the machine and the menu the machine yeah it's pretty damn shitty 
All right, so let's do a quick overview of the special button over here because here we bring you back into this special menu where you're going back from the game into the say as I say a special like sub menu where we're going to get exit the game, but also going into the settings. With the settings, we can mess around with the digital like an analog option for the joystick. We have like option for full scale and scale for the screen size. The consideration that everything works perfectly. I do have like this weird wide screen that it completely messed it up. Sound option. You can even like turn it on and off, stuff like that. And here we have even have key mapping if you don't like the configuration. So when it comes to the extra menu, including a quick load, quick save, we do have some extra cool stuff to it. But let's try some games. All right, so the first thing I've noticed with this, the audio quality in general is not super bad, but it is also not very loud. So when you're looking overall with the quality when it comes to the audio, yeah, you can hear like the emulation is pretty damn messed up. So let's give you a quick example. Let's boot up the game. You will see how bad this is. So this is basically like just 60 bit. So my opinion, what they're doing, like they're giving you like new kinds of as a ways to play with different models, but they still didn't improve anything to the back end. And you cannot change out emulators or, you know, you can swap out with like the ROM files or games, but that's it. All right, so with and back display, you can see like it goes all crazy with the dead pixels. I don't know if the camera picks them up. You have one there, one there, over there, there. Oh man, like it's absolutely like laughable, but at the same time, I just need to cry with this. Oh boy. And so far, I can see like the the freaking emulation of NES seems to be working. They didn't mess that part up. Let's try some Roadhouse. Roadhouse. All right, so next up, let's try some Super NES. Curious how this will run. You know, <laughs> this is not like really a difficult game to emulate, so. Really runs like shit, baby. You really don't want to play the game. This is really bad emulation. It's really bad. Oh yeah, baby. Oh man, man, man. All right, so let's next up try the D pad. Do have some difference in audio levels. Okay. Yeah, so let's see how good this thing is. Oh, it's the same kind of D-pad. You know, like it doesn't. Freaking D-pad! I hate it. You know how can you mess this something all up like this? See, the problem is you need to press both directions very hard. See, then you're going to get some moves out, but absolutely garbage. Yeah, disappointing, I can tell you that. Alright, so next up, let's try some Game Boy Advance. Alright, let's see what we can do with this. Hmm. Or just the game in general, but sometimes you have the idea that we have some audio delays with sound effects. Hmm, it does seem to be working just fine. Hmm. Interesting. Really interesting. Well, another thing I wanted to try, what happens if we go into the settings and we go into the screen size. So this basically 
skill. So it's quite interesting to see like this is the skill option. Mm, all right. Okay, so for the final test, I wanted to try some PlayStation 1 just to see how it runs. I can already tell you the intro screen was absolutely like stuttering like crazy. Oh, man, yeah. Okay, so. So this is absolutely what I mean with this freaking stupid scale option that doesn't work for every single game. All right, let's go back to full. And there we go. But you can just hear it started like crazy. Yeah, so the performance for PlayStation 1, I would not be surprised that, let's say, two-dimensional game runs better, but it's still playable, but you can hear a lot of stutter when it comes to the audio. But let's take a close look at the option with the HDMI out. How does this work? So the game has been like, still running on the system, so let's see if we can plug it in when the game is actually running. Right. And let's see if this works. Some of the devices do have this option. And here you can see like this works like a charm. We can even use the display on the handheld itself. Pretty damn cool. But I think it's really damn cool future. So you can use this thing like a game system on your television. So yeah, an option we didn't have many, let's say, let's say many, let's say handhelds before this or sometimes. So for conclusion, it's very simple. It is nothing new. Yeah, maybe the menu it's new that they're using, but the overall performance is pretty damn bad. You can see like a lot of problems with emulation. They didn't fix a lot. But I said, I do guess like, do they even fix anything? So the overall performance is pretty damn like bad. Also the D-pad, I really don't like. I basically like hate it. Wrong position and absolute place like garbage when it comes to fighting games. The form factor, yeah, it's slim. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. But that's it. I personally really don't like this product in general. And I don't say that very often like this. But I'm quite disappointed. After reviewing so many of these handhelds, you expect to get some things right. Yeah, okay, the HDMI function is pretty damn cool. But if the emulation is pretty damn bad to a certain point, it stutters and it doesn't have like a good FPS, what's the point? I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of the Wicked family. And it would be great to see you in the next video.